Good way to start the interview. Okay. Like, very deep. Uh, so my upbringing was was relatively uh, full of a lot of lessons. Um, I think I was raised in a family that could give me what I needed to to grow to be a better human being. I was raised with there's a lot of love. I would say, even though um, I was I was literally. For most of my teenage years, I was alone, and even even though I lived with my grand and and um, my mom got married, and and I stayed in in Orlando West, but I, I I made a lot of sacrifices for football, and when I was meant to move out of the hood from Orlando West and go stay with my mom, I chose to stay in Soweto because of football. And and I so so I think my upbringing my upbringing was was adequate for me to 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 direct me into a path where I knew from a very early age what my what my what my passion was, you know. Uh, it didn't help that I was raised in a football family, and of course I had I had a yeah. football background already. But uh, even even as a kid, I, I made a lot of sacrifices for football. And and what also helped was I also I also discovered uh, religion and Christianity at that age. And so I had a very heavy reliance on on. On the Bible and and Christianity and prayer, and so I never felt alone. And uh, so um, my grand was a nurse, and she would work night shifts, and I would I would be left behind at home with 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 my with my cousins and and my uncle. But I did a lot of things for myself, you know, and I I think. I think as as we went, as as I as as we went and as I grew up, I I became I think I became stronger, wiser, and 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 even more more focused, you know, because I I knew from a very very young age what I wanted in life. Uh, I don't know how it shaped my career because. Um, but I, I, I would presume, and even though maybe saying saying it's by default is a is a is a complete fabrication, possibly. But but I would say that being a football coach and following this career is by default because I don't I don't remember at any time one making the decision to be a full time coach and leaving playing football. I don't remember at any time. Aspiring to be a football coach uh, from a very young age, but I do think that uh, being a football coach is a bit of a calling for me, uh, and I say that because I know I know where, and maybe I'm, I'm I sit in a privileged position now with hindsight, and I can look back and trace certain memorable and very important events in my life that took place that directed me towards coaching, yeah. but. I I don't think that I I ever aspired as a young kid to be a football coach, and it was was probably impossible for for a young young person to be a football coach because growing up all the coaches were, were retired football players or ex professional football players late fifties sixties, and that was the image you always had of of of, 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 a, of a football coach. But the reality is. Is when I look back now, I I I get to understand why I had to be a football coach, and um, 
a lot of a lot of of course a lot of uh, that has to do with the family that I come from yeah. because because already that was football was already in my blood you know I I think my earliest childhood memories were of me being in a, in the stadium already as a kid you know and uh, even though growing up I remember still going to to Orlando Stadium to Rand Stadium to Ellis Park you know, sometimes even with my mother you know and um, so for sure that played a big 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 role in, 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 in me being involved in football and loving the game the way I love the game uh, but I don't think that I don't think that it had a lot to do with my career apart from the fact that uh, football has always been a passion and uh, has been something within the family that that we, no one could ever escape. Okay, so at your age, people are still playing football, but you're already the head coach of one of the biggest clubs yeah. right now. And what does that take? I mean, how would you encourage somebody your age to leave football and to, you know, from playing to, to coaching? It's a difficult one because I think that the pressures, the stress, the 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 the, um, the sacrifices that you got to make when you are a young football coach. Mm -hmm. The, the the landmines that you've got to try to navigate your your way through are very very difficult and 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 it becomes it, it becomes very difficult for me to to then probably encourage anybody to to go through the same sort of path and the same journey yeah. Having to having to be a young black man in uh, a field that is not really, uh, and maybe in society in general, that is not really accommodating of young leaders, and then having not played professional football, these three become incredible uh, handicaps, if you like, you know, in the race and. And for sure, in, in in certain moments, I would not I would not encourage because of the difficulties that you face. But I think over and above the the difficulties is the the other side, and the other side is a side that's got a lot more a lot more to it because you 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 influence so much not just in terms of the people that you coach and you work with uh, because for me I think that's what drives me is, is working with football players and helping football players not just to become better footballers but to try to help them to become better human beings and trying to influence their way of thinking and their way of doing certain things but also you influence you influence generations to come you know and as a young leader you you, you have so many people that look up to you and so many people that aspire to achieve what you've achieved and, and therefore in, in another way you would, you would want many other people to experience what I experience, you know. So it's a very difficult one because, because uh, there's a side to coaching that's very dark, uh, very, very unfortunate. And that's a side that has uh, a lot to, to do with, with what your reasons are for doing what you're doing. And I would I would assume that has to a lot, or uh, that relates to a lot of different other professions. Uh, but but for sure, uh, coaching has a has an influence on on your relationships, on your on your health, on your mental state, on your on your day to day activities because you've got to make so much in terms of sacrifices and and, and focusing on, on 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 trying to improve and get better and better and better and that that engulfs you and takes over your life completely. Yeah. And so that, that part is not a part that a lot of people know and a lot of people want to, want to accept. But it's, it's a critical part because that's the part that comes uh, and brings with it the, the success and the, the glory and the, the fame and the yeah. fortune that people see. And, uh, but what the people do not see is the other side and probably that's the, uh, 
uh, that's the that's the side that um, maybe makes or breaks you. You know, uh, they say blessings and burdens are, are cousins. And the blessing to be to be uh, a man of inspiration, a coach, and someone who, who leads uh, one of the biggest teams in, in in South Africa, maybe on the African continent, comes with the burden of carrying that. And, and um, so it's a very difficult question, but but one that maybe you 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 would you would probably say no, for sure, go for it, but also understand the. What that it, it, it what it comes with. Yeah. Strange question because I don't know. I've I've been doing coaching since I was fourteen years old, so I don't think I've ever reached a point where I had crossroads. And in fact, maybe the only crossroad that I would think about is when I when I finished uh, matric. But already, as I said, growing up, I already knew what I wanted. I already knew that I wanted to be a football coach from the age of 14 because I started coaching then. And even though I was still playing. But the funny thing is when I, when I, when I left matric, my teachers at school said to my mother, I should study law. Oh, I can't remember what the other one was. But my mother was, 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 was insistent that I study law. And I remember filling out the application forms for university and, and there, was, there was a lot of papers. But there was one question in particular that said, which, which degree are you enrolling for or applying for? And I left that line open. And my mother signed all the papers and as soon as she signed the papers, I put sports science because I couldn't write sports science yeah. before she, she signed the papers because she would not have agreed. In her mind, the teachers were right. Yeah. And, and in her mind, uh, she wanted me to, to, to become something else. Yeah. But I was insistent. Yeah, 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 something a lot safer. But I was insistent and, and I'm glad I was, I was insistent because I think, I think uh, it's a story that goes to a lot of young young kids, young 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 kids in terms of follow your passion, you know, sometimes. Uh, it's, it's not easy all the time, but yeah. following your passion sometimes is, is always always a lot more uh, leads to a lot more happiness and a lot more peace, you know. You you have you tend to live with yourself better. Okay. So in the spirit of football, uh, where games are nineteen minutes long. You have 90 seconds to give 15 year old Rulani life changing advice. Yo. What would you say? 15 seconds. 90 you seconds. Have 90 seconds for 15 year old Rulani. For 15 year old Rulani. Don't take everything so personal. And I think I still struggle with that till today. I take a lot of things very personally. And, I, and, and that's one, one advice maybe I would still give even Rilani at a younger age is don't take things so personal. Okay. Alright, so um, would you say that you're a great leader or a great manager? Sure. Because there's a difference. Yeah. yeah. There probably there's, there's huge differences, but I would think that I'm more of a leader than a manager. Uh, managers, I think, also have need the ability to to micromanage, and I don't think I have that. I think I'm a leader in the sense that I can be in the background a lot. I mean, yeah. today we 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 travelled and visited a, a hospice, and generally the the head coach of the football club would would stand on the stage and try to yeah. to to speak, you know, and 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 I don't like. A lot of a lot of people don't know this about me, but I don't like speaking in front of crowds, especially when I represent the football club, because I believe the football club is about the football players. I mean, the game of football belongs to the football players, and I love to be the type of coach that can still be in the periphery and still be in the background. I like I like I like to to be in the forefront in in crisis, yeah. in difficult moments. For sure, you can you can count on me, but in the good moments and in the moments where it has to be about the football players, I like to 
to lead from the back. And I think I think that's maybe that's the difference between a leader and a manager. A manager is a lot more in control and it directs a lot more. But I think a leader is one that can 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 show up in moments of crisis, but also is a person that is not always visible within the the organization. And I like to be that type of type of leader. Nelson Mandela said, "The best leaders are the people that can lead from the back, and leaders eat last." And I'm that type of person. I want I want to see everyone else around me happier, and not necessarily be the sole reason for their happiness. Yeah. But to be part of directing them towards their happiness. And I think that probably is the biggest difference, in my opinion, between a leader and a, and a manager. It's a tough one because, because they've got their own lives to fulfill, you know. But I, but I, I, I look at some of the best coaches in the world, your Mourinho, your Klopp's, your, your Pep Guardiola's, these are coaches that one of the, one of the things Carlo Ancelotti, probably one of the best coaches in, in the history of football, has ever said is uh, that you can't lead them if you can't if you don't love them. And the first the first thing you have to try to establish is is an emotional connection with the players. You know? And the players players tend to play well for you when they know that there's there's some form of emotional yeah, there's a care. There's a and it's it's authentic and it's not fabricated. Yeah. And 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 so I try to be that type of coach. You know, I try to be the type of coach that can still be not just not just the one that, that barks up the instructions, but the one that can also put a hand around, the one that they can rely on also as a as a father, as a brother, as a as a friend maybe even, you know? And and but still, uh, for me, a true definition of a friend is someone that you you can always rely on to tell you the truth. That's that's the most difficult part, and that's the challenge. I think maybe as a as a as a as a coach, you 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 learn over the years uh, to be also reliant and available and reliable for yourself. And it's not always easy because you. You, as as a lead, as a leader and in that coaching space, when you deal with human beings, and particularly with football players, you've got to be uh, the part that no one else sees as 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 the foundation, you know, for the performance, the foundation for the happiness, the foundation for a sense of belonging. Um, but the the reality is also you've got to be able to to find to find the space where you can also rely on yourself a lot more and maybe even surround yourself with people that you you know you can you can trust to be able to to support you and to to give you the encouragement and 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 and, and, and the the energy that you give to towards us a lot uh, studying sports science instead of and in a way betraying my mother you know because uh, only, only recently she probably found out that that's what I did, you know, because I mentioned that in interviews prior. Uh, but that was a very difficult decision to do. Uh, I made so many sacrifices for the game. Uh, I lost relationships. I lost time with friends, uh, contact with friends. I didn't even go to my metric dance because I had to attend a football match, you know, as a coach, not even as a football player, as a coach. So uh, there's a lot of things that I know I've, I've, I've paid my dues and I've made a lot of sacrifices to get to where I am. And that's why when people say, ah, oh, but he's lucky to be where he is, it doesn't hurt me, it doesn't move me because I know that the amount of time and energy sacrifices that I've made to be where I am. And, and, and therefore a lot, of, a lot of my achievements, I think, of course, number one is through the grace of God and for sure. Uh, I owe it a lot to him for, for the talent, for the opportunities, for sure. But, but at the same time, I also know that I've had uh, a lot of a lot of questions that I've had to answer and and had to answer on my own. And sometimes uh, they've hurt. Sometimes they've brought a lot of pain and anguish. But 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 when I look back, I think uh, a lot of it has been worth it. 
through prayer. Only through prayer. Um, I, 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 I know nothing else except praying. And, and, and uh, I'm, I'm fortunate enough to be a living testimony and a person that can speak and, and, and reveal the, the marvelous things that God has done for me in my life. That is demonstrated, of course, in my day-to-day -day yeah. conduct and how I, I carry myself. But the, the most important is just to try to always to, to, to be a better human being. And I think that helps, that helps me in a certain way because not only do I reflect the grace and the favor that God has had upon my life, but I also am able to, to give myself an opportunity also to, to be proud of who I have become, you know, and that helps a little bit in, 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 in recognizing the, the amount of hard work and sacrifices because I have a clear understanding that I, I've, got, I've got no other, no other thing to be dependent on except prayer, and especially in the difficult moments. And then, and then uh, with prayer comes a lot of hard work and a lot of persistence and, and motivation. And I think that's, that, that probably is what I rely on uh, during the difficult moments. Yeah, the challenge is, as I said, I mean, uh, the society for me, I don't think is a society that welcomes young leadership. So already you've got that as a challenge. And then uh, for sure, then the, the, the difficulties of, of, of working with, with people who you've got to consistently prove prove your worth and prove your capacity. Uh, that's very demanding because you've got to you've, you've 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 got to stay motivated to be able to give your best in 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 in, in good moments and in, in, in bad moments and yeah. particularly in bad moments. But the advantages for sure is as I said even earlier is is is, is the privilege of, of, of influencing generations and influencing many a young kid and, and trying to help them to aspire to become not just not just great coaches or great football players but also great human beings you know so so that's uh, I would say those would, would be the two biggest challenges and advantages okay. so has Sundance always been the biggest dream because you've been with Orlando Paris before and Chipotle United before but has Sundance always been that club for you no I'd be lying if I said yes because growing up growing up of course in Orlando and in Soweto there was there was two big teams, Chiefs and Pirates. And uh, and then there was also Morocco Swallows. And and I remember even at a certain point there were teams like Manning Rangers who won the league and Santos won the league and then Sundowns started dominating. Yeah. And then and then uh, but I remember that also as a kid I had I had my dreams tabulated on a piece of paper which stayed in my Bible. And one of the goals was always to, to coach a big team. And, and, and um, yeah, uh, I sit in a position now where I can say I've coached two of the biggest teams on the African continent. I've been, the, I've been a head coach at, at Orlando Pirates. I've been a head coach at Mama Lodi Sundowns and, and at my age, uh, those are two incredible gifts and incredible uh, privileges in, in which I owe nothing else except, as I said even before, only to the grace of God, God's favor. And, and, and a big part of that is, is also a recognition that there is a responsibility to sacrifice and to work hard towards attaining those goals and those dreams. And, I think uh, when I look at myself, I don't see anything else that I can say I am very good at except what I bring, which is my work ethic and, 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 and my level to sacrifice and give my best for, for this passion. How would you describe your stay at Magic Memorable, uh, extremely important, extremely important and necessary. Yeah, short, too short. 
Uh -huh. uh, but I think also came at a time when when I needed to be by the yeah. sea and by the ocean at a very difficult time at Pirates, but necessary time. Yeah. And uh, and then COVID came and and I think it uh, and I think my time at Chiba United was also an important part of my career. Mm. Okay. Um, let's talk about the criticism that comes with your job because yeah. there's like a lot of voices and a lot of people saying this is what I want, right? So how do you stay level-headed and not so reactive to what's being said? And I know you spoke about not taking things personally all the time, but how do you ensure that you don't respond to everything? I think I've just learned over the years to, to, to grow a thick skin. I think uh, I've always the challenge with me is uh, still one of my greatest weaknesses is I'm very emotive, and very emotional, and I still take a lot of things personal. Yeah. But I think I've, I've grown to understand that people will only respond from their position and, and not from your position. And that you are the only one that is able to understand your position because you're the only one that, that lives it, that understands it, that feels it. And, and therefore nothing can ever be personalized towards you if it is not from you. And that's an understanding that I've, I've had to grow in. And, and, and as I said, maybe having worked with a person like Dr. Kozo, who, used, who worked a lot on my weaknesses, who, who, who helped me to identify a lot of my weaknesses, and, 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 and gave me so many uh, advices on, on how to work on, on being a better human being. And, and, and I had to go through that phase. Uh, uh, up until I also started working with a person that, uh, like Dr. Patrice Motsipo, who then s started uplifting a lot more of my strengths yeah. and supporting me as a, as a, as a person and, and made me aware that mm, he had probably the same type of challenges or, or, or faults in his upbringing and in his, in his character that he finds and identifies in me. And uh, so, so again, as I say, I think I've been very privileged to work with two of the greatest leaders who, who have really shaped my, my, my personality and my character. Yeah, yes, for sure, I think it's possible. And every single year, with a lot of work and a lot of sacrifices, I think we get closer and closer towards that and I and I look at uh, Colotoro has been announced as a, as a coach in the championship of course maybe also the background of having played professional football in that space helps but Pizzo Musimane has been able to do is also incredible and uh, it's a great platform for a lot of us black South African coaches and for him to to be in Saudi Arabia I think uh, opens opens a lot of doors for us and, and uh, Possible is nothing. Yeah. yeah, I do. I do because I don't separate my work from my personality and from who I am. Um, just recently, I uh, I listened to one of the um, name runs away from me, the comedian morning show. Morning, what, what? Trevor Noah. Oh, Trevor. Yeah, I was listening to an interview of Trevor Noah and he said something so profound. And he said, before you make it big, make it real. Make it genuine, make it about you, make it you. Yeah. And before you even think about the glory, the glitz, the glam and everything, don't separate yourself from your, from your, from yourself from your career, do you know what I mean? And I found that so inspirational because uh, uh, a big part of me has always wanted to, to be authentic and genuine in how I relate to people yeah. and how I lead. And not have a double life. And not have, do you know what I mean? It's not, it's, not, it's, it's very, very difficult. It's exhaustive also. Yeah, it's not, it's, it's and, and to deal with people in, in, in that context where you're dealing with every human being as authentically as you possibly can is a very challenging thing. But I think it's necessary because uh, 
this opportunity to to be a coach and to be a coach of of, of one of the biggest clubs in, in on the African continent and and for sure in the future one of the biggest clubs on on the global stage for sure. only comes once and you've got to make you've got to make Rulani part of that mm -hmm. part of that journey yeah. and you can't make Rulani the coach part of the journey alone you've That's got to make right. Rulani the human being Umlungis the person the part of the journey because you, you will only get to experience it only once. It, actually, I do, I've, 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 I do have a lady that I, I speak to, mm -hmm. um, but she's not really a therapist or a professional psychologist, mm -hmm. but she's someone that's helped me a lot. Probably. But, but for sure, I think it's, it's something that's necessary. It's still a taboo topic, especially for a lot of men out there, but I think it's something that's still necessary because we carry a lot, we carry a lot of scars, uh, we carry a lot of uh, wounds that um, not too many of us feel safe enough to be able to speak about. And uh, maybe therapy provides us with, with, with those type of opportunities to be able to, to heal, you know, from things that mm, the world would not necessarily allow us to heal from. And uh, one of the things that I would, I would definitely, and I, I still consider going strongly into is, 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 is therapy. That it's okay to be vulnerable. Well, that it's okay to, to be emotional. It's okay for a man to be emotional. Uh, and I've had to unlearn that because growing up in the hood, no chance. You've, I've seen some of the most gruesome things uh, with my own eyes. I've seen people dying in front of my eyes. You know, uh, you know you, when you grow up in the township and in Soweto, especially in those times, you, I mean, I've witnessed gangs. I've been, I've, I've, I've befriended people who've done the most gruesome of things, even, you know, and, 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 and you were, you were taught in, in, in that type of space that a man has got to be strong and show no emotion and show no weakness. But for sure, I think one of the greatest things that I've had to learn is that it's okay to be vulnerable, it's okay to have weaknesses because uh, in vulnerability is strength, in weakness is, is growth. And so, and so uh, probably those would be the two that I've probably had to learn. I face it head on. I used to be until I started to 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 understand exactly that at times there, there is power in in allowing the situation to solve itself. But I don't hide away from conflict. I don't hide away from problems and from from issues. Um, but I, I, I look to resolve issues up until the, a certain point where I feel things are unresolvable. Uh, but it takes me a very long time to get to that point. Mm, and, and that's probably another weakness of mine is that by the time I feel that I cannot do it anymore, it takes a lot to change my mind. No, but big trust issues. I've got big trust issues because I've been betrayed far too many times. Yeah. And uh, still to today, I think uh, uh, one of my greatest weaknesses too is... is, is, is and, I, and, I, and it's a weakness I don't think I want to work on because I think, uh, I think human beings are human beings and human beings are fallible. <laughs> human beings yeah yeah no one is perfect uh, I was telling you about Jordan Peterson earlier and he says uh, uh, good people are, are people that have the capacity to be bad people but choose always to be good people and I and I and I strongly believe that human beings human beings always have a choice whether to be good or to be bad and there are times that there are human beings that choose only to be bad and so it becomes very difficult to always trust every single person. Uh, and growing up, I remember because uh, one of Dr. Ivan Koza's voice notes when you, when you, if you couldn't reach him. 
Uh, his voice note was trust, but not too much. Something like that. And now only his voice note has changed. His voicemail message has changed. It's it's uh, trust, but verify. And I, and I find that very, very profound because um, prior to it's the story of it's the story of the eagle. So the eagle, the eagle before it chooses its wife or its mating partner, the the eagle always tests the eagle always tests its mate by throwing a fig. And so she would throw the fig so many times, so many times, and throw the fig and throw the fig and throw the fig. And if if she gave up or he gave up before she gave up, then they would not mate. Do you see what I mean? So it's 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 nice. You learn a lot in nature, and you learn a lot with uh, with uh, with animals. And part two, probably my story is is is, a, is an understanding that we live in Slavene and in Slavene people people are people. It is, but 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 so is the the journey towards towards success. The journey towards success is a journey that speaks about the road less traveled, yeah. and the road less traveled at times is, is a very lonely journey, but one that is necessary at times. And I have a clear understanding that the ones that are meant to be part of that journey will be part of that journey, and you just have to trust God and the universe to be able to to put the right people in your path to just you in your journey. Uh, there is there's a very popular biblical biblical uh, conundrum that speaks about knowing who your Judas is and who your Peter is. And that there's a there's a big big difference between a Judas and a Peter. Well Judas was a was a person that uh, betrayed but for, for a greater purpose, but betrayed Jesus Christ. And he did that even though he had a choice. Not. And yet Peter was just caught on a bad day where he was dealing with so much and yet didn't betray, but, but was fallible to, 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 to falling victim to the pressures of having to protect himself while dealing with so much and and, and therefore we still showed so much loyalty and love towards Jesus Christ but because of just one mistake you know, one or one bad day uh, made one bad choice but Judas planned sure. conspired and over many days uh, knew exactly what he was doing even though it was for a greater good but it still was betrayal, and he knew very well that it was betrayal, even from the word go.